Hello, and welcome to Senior Code Review Buddy. My name is Chris, and today I'm going to talk about the importance of trying to avoid overly complex statements. When working on code, we'll spend a lot of time reading code. Reading the code we're going to modify, reading the code we've just modified, reading the code we're calling, reading tests, and so on. And when we're reading code, we're usually reading it a statement or line at a time. A short and easy line, like x equals 5, is really easy to read and understand. While something like x equals 5 if time in room greater than room deadline, else get room default value, is a lot harder to parse. I need to understand what time in room and room deadline mean, and why am I setting x to 5 in one condition, and to get room default value in another. This is why it can be helpful to take complex or long statements and break them up into two or more statements. You can use variables or helper function names to add more context around what the different subsections of the original statement mean as well, making it much easier for future readers, which could easily include yourself in six months when you have forgotten all about that code. So by breaking down longer statements that are harder to read, you make things easier for your team in the future. All right, with that in mind, let's look at some examples. I've written up this little example here to represent the game over function of some game. I imagine that it's some kind of roguelike game where the game ends when we've either lost all of our health or we've reached the final room with a special item. Looking at this function, we've got this initial section here for player health. It's pretty clear. But then there's this big other chunk and it's long. Okay, first off we check to see if the player's x value is between a certain range. And then we check to see if their y value is between a certain range. And then we check to see if the golden key is in their inventory. So this is checking what I had previously described. We're at a certain position and we have a certain item in our inventory. But it's kind of hard to read this. This whole expression is just too long. So let's try and clean this up a little bit. So first off, Let's just return right away if player health equals zero. There's no need to continue here, and this is able to sort of be a standalone thing. So we'll remove that from there now. So with this rest, let's let's move the coordinates into their own helper function, something called if is player in final room. There x player y. And this we can just can just copy this and and we can also yeah let's put this key into its own variable call it player has golden key golden key and so then we will replace this with is player over, player y, and player has golden key. Okay, so now instead of one long complex statement, we have a couple of different statements, and I think they're all much easier to read. It's really easy to see and just think about the player health on its own. All of the coordinate checking is in a single part and the inventory checks also here. So I think this is much easier to look at, and if we needed to add another condition, say, you know, we end the game based on how much time has passed, it feels like it'd be much easier to modify this than to modify that single large statement we had before. All right, well, let's go to the next example. This example is from a little podcast program I've been working on for a number of years. This code is a snippet from a function that loads the podcast database from a file. And this particular snippet is handling the case where I've removed a podcast from the list of podcasts I follow, but it hasn't been removed from the database yet. This if statement here is more complex than I would like. I'm creating a string, I'm passing it into input to get some user input, and then I'm comparing that result to a value. This seems like too much to be happening inside a simple if statement. So the first thing I actually did, because I haven't touched this code in a while, 
is I went to check if I had a test for either of these flows. And I didn't. This code was completely untested. So I went and I updated my tests to test both of these paths. It required a bit of code changing to start since input is actually getting user input, which I obviously don't want in unit tests. So I added a new parameter to the function to delegate getting the user input. It defaults to input to work as it did before, but I now can override it in tests and they can pass in whatever responses they want. So I called this new parameter user input function. So let's change that to this here. All right. I also added a new exception here. I changed this to database loading exception instead of just exception. Um, the main reason I ended up doing this was that since I had to check that the exception was getting thrown there in the test, it felt weird to say make sure it's just a regular exception since a lot of other stuff could generate that. So I created and checked for this specific exception class. So with all of that, I got the tests up and running, and now I can modify this code. And since I have these tests, I'll be more confident I don't accidentally break something or change behavior without noticing it. So now we can go back to actually trying to improve this code. Let's start by moving the string creation out. Let's create a new variable called no match found message. We will set it to this string here. Okay, and then instead of getting the user input, let's uh, do that outside and save it to no match found user response. And then we can compare that inside this if statement. And this if statement now is a lot simpler, and I think each of these lines is easier to read. One thing that actually sticks out to me now looking at this is we've got this magic value remove, and it's hard coded in two different spots. This spot we show the user and the spot that we check to. But there's nothing ensuring that these two values are actually in sync. If I was to accidentally make this removes, this just would introduce a bug. Users could keep typing remove and it would not work the way they expect. So let's move this into its own constant. Remove keyword. And then instead of having these two hard coded, I'll just refer to that. Okay. And with that, they now can't get out of sync. And while we're here, I'm also going to update this comment because the original version didn't make much sense to me. We still need to load this podcast to remove its data from the database file. So what is happening here is that at this point in the flow, we've decided to drop the podcast, but we still need to parse its contents out from the database file. So that's what this comment is trying to say, that we are loading the podcast, parsing from the database and not saving it. But I think I can improve it a bit with something like, since this removed, podcast is still in the database file. We load it to parse it from the file, but then intentionally don't save this data anywhere since we no longer want it. It's maybe a little more verbose, but I think this is a little clearer. And when I come back to this in the future, I think I'll better understand what I had meant. All right, and there we go. I think this snippet is much clearer than it was before. So thanks for walking through that with me today. Um, if you've enjoyed this, please consider hitting the like button or subscribing. If you have any comments, code you'd like me to review, or ideas you'd like me to talk about, uh, please leave a comment below or reach me at chris at seniorcodereviewbuddy.com. Thanks and have a great day.